Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to our Midweek Connect. I'm very excited to be with you again today. God is good. Uh, we've had a beautiful day uh, today in, in Brentwood. The weather is, is lovely, uh, and the sun is shining, and big fluffy clouds are dancing across the sky, and the devil's having a bad day. And the reason I know that is because God is still on the throne. Amen. Amen. And I'm excited about what God is doing. Sunday on Mother's Day, we had some testimonies uh, that were just very encouraging, uplifting, faith building. Uh, and I got to talk to one of uh, the uh, families, one of the elders of our church today. And uh, just God performed a miraculous uh, healing protection situation in his life. Uh, that I'm going to have him uh, testify to the church about uh, in the very near future. But, it, you know, if we're not careful, we will allow uh, the frustrations of living in this world and all of the wickedness and evil that we're surrounded by cause us to become very discouraged. But we need to remember that this world is not our home, that we are residents of a heavenly kingdom, and God has prepared for us that have obeyed his word, that believe on the name of Jesus and obey the scriptures and are filled with his spirit. He's pre prepared for us a place uh, and he's coming back again to, to bring us with him. In John chapter 14, that's what Jesus said, that he goes to prepare a place for you. And if he goes and prepares a place for you, he will come again and receive you unto himself, that where he is there you may be also. And so I'm thankful to know who Jesus is. God is worthy of all of our praise. Tonight, uh, we're going to be talking about the fact that God is greatly to be praised. He's worthy of all of our praise. If you have your Bibles... If you'll turn to the book of Psalm, uh, the 96th Psalm, and we'll begin reading there tonight. Verse 1 says, O sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen and his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. <laughs> Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood rejoice before the Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and he shall judge the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. What an awesome song that the psalmist wrote regarding the goodness and the greatness of our God. Let's read Psalm 100 and begin reading at verse 1. It says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, 
His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. What a powerful song. What a powerful revelation. And we need to remember that the Lord is good, that his mercy endures forever, and his truth to all generations. We need to remember that God is worthy of worship. David could easily have fallen into the trap that many of us do when we face reversals, trials, and troubles in our lives. David could have blamed God. He could have asked how God could allow him, the hero of Israel, the slayer of Goliath, to be hunted like a dog across the deserts and mountains of Israel. But while we do at times see David being heartbreakingly honest with God about his desperate situation, Far more often we see him worshiping and praising God. David decided, as we must as well decide, that no matter what the circumstances in his life, God was still worthy to be worshipped. The scripture says God is to be feared above all gods. Worship is connected to holy reverence or fear of God. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness and fear him before all the earth, Psalm 96 and 9 states. It's an understanding of who God is. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. We need to remember that God is the creator of the universe, the heavens and the earth. He is the master of all circumstances. He is the mighty one and the holy one of Israel. The God that we serve is the only living God. There is no other God. He alone is God. And we worship him and we serve him. And he's worthy of our praise. David saw this fear of the Lord as a positive thing. Since God is so powerful, he is a mighty ally. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, according to Psalm 33 and 18. And Psalm 34, 7 assures us, The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him, and delivereth them. Even in the cave, David could worship because he was certain his mighty God had deliverance waiting for him. Not only do we worship God, but the Bible says that all creation worships the Lord. All creation points to a creator. All creation worships as the Lord with single possible exception, us. Humanity alone of all God's creation has free will. We decide whether we will praise him or not praise him. The sun shines forth God's glory. The moon reflects God's glory. And the stars remind us of God's glory and infinite majesty. The intricacies of the plants, animals, and landscape all around us point to God's immeasurable wisdom and creative genius. These all function involuntarily to worship God. There's only one creature on earth who can refuse to worship God, and that is you and me. When it came to humanity, God decided to give us the choice, do I worship God or not? Voluntary worship from a willing heart Overwhelmed by the majesty and glory of God means more to God than all the rest of creation put together. When we put it that way, how could we ever refuse to give God Almighty the worship that he is due? I want to take for just a moment here, and I want us to think about some of the things, just think about some of the things that God has done for you. Where would we be without the mighty God working in our life? His power to heal and provide, to restore, to give joy in, in darkness. And the Bible says that he is willing to trade. And in this trade that the scripture talks about, he always ends up getting the worst of the deal. We always get the better part of the deal. The Bible says that he will trade us beauty for ashes. He will take the oil of joy, the spirit of joy, for the spirit of heaviness. He'll trade his joy for heaviness, beauty for ashes. 
What kind of God can do that other than our God? Every part of creation does all it can to worship God. The sun shines as bright as it can. The birds sing as beautifully as possible. The flowers bloom in the most glorious color that they can make available. We should do the same thing. If you can sing, sing with everything in you. If you cannot sing, at least make a joyful noise. I've always thought it was, it was a little comical that the Bible says for us to sing, but then it also says make a joyful noise. If you can't sing, that's all right. Just be happy and be loud about it. If you can play an instrument, play with all the skill that you possess and all the glory for the glory of God. And if you have strength in your legs, dance and jump before the Lord. If you have hands, clap them to the Lord. Raise those hands to the Lord and worship the Lord. I remember uh, as a young man, uh, we, we had a lot of chickens, um, hundreds of chickens and turkeys and things. And uh, I remember standing out in the uh, hen coop. It was a quite a large one outside and uh, with my father. And we were standing there tossing handfuls of of broken ground corn uh, to the hens, and he was sitting there admiring his his uh, flock. <laughs> he used to call him his herd of chickens. His <laughs> he was uh, he was admiring his handiwork as as a, uh, a farmer, a rancher, a, a chickener, <laughs> and. Uh, there was a, uh, a container that all the, the chickens they would drink out of, and it was always fascinating that when a chicken would bend down to drink, that it would raise its head up to the sky to swallow. And I'll never forget my father looking at me one day and saying, son, do you know why that chicken does that? It's because it is thanking God. It's worshiping and praising God for providing the water and providing the food that such to such a degree that every time it does it lifts its head to heaven and i i always found that to be encouraging that if these animals that don't have any knowledge really of of a mighty creator uh by their very instinct and by their very creation they're designed to give honor to god how much greater can we those of us that who do know who jesus is how much more can we praise and worship him? And how much more does it mean to God? The Bible says, I will worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. But worship goes much deeper than singing and shouting and dancing and clapping. David said, oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness in Psalm 96 and 9. It could be argued that holiness brings even more glory to God than our praise and worship at church on Sundays. It is possible to sing and shout on Sunday, but then go out and live in such a way that it undermines our supposed high regard of God. If we truly have fear, awesome reverence, and respect for God, it will not only come out in our praise, but it will also manifest itself in the way that we live day to day. The pastor that was a the pastor of the church that I was raised in in Tulsa, Oklahoma, Elder C.P. Williams, used to say this uh, on, on a Sunday. And even as a child, I remember hearing him say this. I don't mind if you jump and, and touch the ceilings and shout and dance and run the aisles on Sunday as long as when you land, you walk straight on Monday. And this is what the thought on this part of the lesson is. Praising God at church is a wonderful thing. It's a commanded thing in the scripture. It's, it's a blessed thing. But if that's the only time that you give him reverence, then that is something that you need to work on. Because it's more blessed to walk through your week in holiness of lifestyle, holiness of heart, holiness of mind, than it is to shout and dance and run on Sundays. Those who truly live in awe of God will regularly ask themselves this question. 
Is this pleasing to God and honoring Him? Whatever it is that they're doing, they use that filter. Am I honoring and pleasing God with what I'm doing? Holiness is based on the guidelines laid out in the Word of God. But these guidelines are not an end unto themselves. They are written reflection of God's intentions and will for our lives. When God first made humanity, He said it was very good. Every other part of creation was simply good. Sadly, by the time of the flood, everything else in creation was still good. But humans had completely abandoned God's purpose for them. What had been very good was so evil, God said, that I'm sorry that I have made them. In Genesis 6 and 7. All the evil that now exists in the world is a result of humanity departing from God's original instructions. But the good news is that we can get back on track through Jesus Christ. We can be holy as he is holy. He can change our lives forever. And when we listen to and obey God's word and God's spirit, then holiness is the result. Therefore, holiness is simply fulfilling God's original plan for us. It's like the sun shining during the day. It is perfectly natural and perfectly glorious. It is not some artificial construct or some legalistic set of rules made up by man. Instead, holiness is listening to our Creator's instructions and living the way He always intended for us to live. God is greatly to be praised. Psalm 96 4 says this, For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Much has been said and written about the difference between worship and praise. These are clearly closely related and sometimes used interchangeably. Some say worship is what we do because of who God is, and praise is what we do in response of what God has done. Others would say worship is directed toward God alone for Him to hear, while praise is when we tell others about what God has done. David made this connection between praise and and the other people when he wrote, Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all the people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. Psalm 96, 3 and 4. Whether we are aiming our praises to God directly or praising him to others around us, we certainly have a lot to praise God for. Psalm 105 says, For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. Aren't you thankful for the mercy of God in our lives? I'm so thankful for His mercy. Without His mercy, none of us could be saved. Without His mercy, none of us would have any hope. Without His mercy, we would have given up long ago. The Lord is good. I want you to think for just a moment about how important it is to recognize that the Lord is good and God is all-powerful. Imagine if he were evil instead of good. What if God were cruel? What if he enjoyed tormenting people like the false gods of many nations in history? Who would survive? What would our lives look like? I want you to think for just a moment. Right now, what would your life be without Jesus? If Jesus had not extended his grace and his love and his mercy to your life, where would we be? I remember the song that, that we used to sing when I was growing up that asked that s simple question, Oh, where would I be? Where would I be? Where would I be without the Lord? It's a very simple phrase, but there's some profound depth to it. Where would I be without the Lord? It wouldn't take me very long of having to think back on some of the roads into heartbreak and darkness and sorrow that I walked down in, in times of my life. And it was the Lord that brought me back, the Lord that had mercy and grace, the Lord that saved me. Where would you be without the love of God? When we begin to think about that, it's so much 
easier to worship him as we remember, if we will be honest with ourselves, we remember the great debt that we owe the Lord. Instead, over and over, instead of him being cruel, the Bible assures us that the Lord is good. He gives good gifts to his children. He sends rain as a symbol of blessing on the just and the unjust. He makes the sun to shine on both as well because he wants all people to know that he loves them. James 1.17 says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Every good thing in life comes from the Lord, and he doesn't change. Praise the Lord is a common greeting among the church people, but perhaps we've become so familiar with the words that we've forgotten the reason behind them. Take some time today to count your blessings. Remember the song, Count Your Blessings? Name them one by one. It would be impossible for me to name all of the blessings of the Lord in my life. Think about the times God has been good to you and brought you through. Times where you hadn't almost given up, but in the weakness of our human frailty, we had just let go of any hope, and we realized we didn't fall because the whole time we were in his hands and he was holding us up. Think about how God has been good to you and brought you through all of these things, and let us praise him because he is good. God's mercy is everlasting, the Bible says. It never expires. It's new every morning. Time and again, David would sin and fail and fall, but he always turned back to God, and he always got up again. He always repented, and he always found that God's mercy was everlasting. We, too, often stumble and fail. There's a nonstop war between our flesh and our spirit, between the carnal human nature and the spiritual nature. And while we all like to pretend that we're perfect when we come to church on Sundays, the truth is we're not. We're not perfect, but we are redeemed. We are bought back by the blood of Jesus. We're not perfect, but we are loved. We're not perfect, but we are forgiven and made righteous through the blood of Jesus Christ. There is a song that was written by a man that I know. His name was Joel Hemphill. And the song says this. One of the verses says, I'm not perfect, just forgiven. I haven't yet arrived, but I'm on my way. Since Jesus found me and forgave me, I can't say I'm perfect, but I can say I'm saved. Rather than acting super spiritual, what if we were to praise God to our friends, co-workers, and unsaved loved ones by saying, here's where I was, a sinner, down and out, and here's what Jesus did for me. Here's how I used to feel. Here's how I feel now. And maybe that will strike a chord with someone who's tired of living a life out of tune with their creator. Maybe someone near you is already sensing that the way he or she is living is along the lines of the sun shining only every once in a while not fulfilling the purpose of the Creator or pleasing the Creator, which has left a hole inside. Well, thanks to God's everlasting mercy, it is not too late for this person or any person. Scripture teaches us that God's truth endures to all generations. As we talk to others about God, we prove once again that His truth endures to all generations. We serve the same God today that David served some 3,000 years ago, and the same God Noah served thousands of years before that. A continuity of truth comes down to us through the ages and through the pages of his book, the Bible, that is unshaken by the ravages of time. 
Critics have come and gone, but his book remains. Governments and empires have risen and tried to eradicate the Bible, but they have fallen and the Bible still stands. Philosophers have tried to suggest alternatives to this book's pure morality, but all human philosophies have failed to create the heart change that this book creates in humanity. In this postmodern era, everything is being questioned. The age-old question that Pontius Pilate posed to Jesus at his trial still echoes in our society today, what is truth? In John 18, 38 is when he asked it. The very foundations of society are being eroded. Reality itself is being questioned. In humanity's rush to ensure that everyone is non-judgmental and tolerant, many people have lost touch with rationality and reason itself. Many have dismissed the Bible as being too absolute, too cut and dry. In its statements of facts, to fit with our supposedly progressive modern mindset. But we can be thankful that while heaven and earth may pass away, the word of God will never pass away. We as Christians do not have to watch the foundation of our lives be swept away by a wishy-washy worldview that changes from one day to the next. We are built upon the solid rock that is Jesus Christ and his word. I will praise him at all times. I will praise and bless the name of the Lord. Given all of this, what should our reaction be? David had a suggestion. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Psalm 104. When we come into the church, we should come with words of thanksgiving and praise on our lips and with thankfulness in our hearts. And every day we should enter into his presence in prayer and praise. We should bless his name for all that he has done and give him glory. What glory do we have to give to God? Any and all glory that we may have. Anything good that we do anything that we give glory to God for, any achievement that we may attain, we give the glory to God for that. Any talent we may have, we give the glory to God for that. Praise Him, bless Him, and give Him glory for what He has done in your life. What a wonderful Savior that we have, Almighty God the faithful one, the just one, the holy one, the all-powerful one, our heavenly Father, our King eternal, our Messiah, our Redeemer, our anchor, our foundation, our rock. We could go on and on. There is no name that is as beautiful as the name of Jesus. There is no God worth any praise in comparison to our God. And I'm so thankful for his grace and his mercy. Go tell someone about the greatness of our God. Go tell him Jesus loves them. Amen. And don't forget to tell him you love him too. Amen. God bless you.